In this episode, Apple's September event, AutoCAD returns to the Mac, and HP to announce a 3D laptop and the fastest netbook they've ever made. Quicksurf Internet Media presents The Geekinator, talking about all things tech and geek. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Phoenix, Arizona, here in Studio C1 at Quicksurf Internet Media. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows. We've got an action-packed news segments this episode, so let's get right into it. Apple has held a special music-related media event today, and in it, they've introduced a new iPod Touch. It has the Retina display, the A4 chip, FaceTime video calling, and HD video recording that you get uh, with the iPhone 4. They've carried that from the iPhone 4 over to the new iPod Touch. In addition to that, uh, they have a new feature called Game Center, which allows you to play games across the network and share, you know, do all that good social stuff uh, that's game related. Um, They've also released a new iPod Nano with the multi-touch interface. It's half the size and weight of the previous iPod Nano. It's got the little built-in clip, built-in FM, and you get 24 hours of music playback on a single charge. Uh, There's a new iPod Shuffle in town as well. Uh, Apple has brought the classic Apple clickable ring to the iPod Touch, something it's never had before. Um, It also includes the voiceover technology that they had in the previous iPod Touch. It also has a built-in clip, and it will be $49. In addition to the sweeping iPod changes at the special media event, Apple has introduced iTunes 10 with Ping. Ping is a music-oriented social network. Watch out MySpace. Basically, it lets you uh, follow musicians and other friends and share what you're listening and what you think about music. And it's basically a social networking revolving around music. Um, also, HDTV shows are now 99 cents, which is nice for individual shows. And iTunes 10, iTunes 10 also lets you do AirPlay wireless music playback using supported speaker systems from third parties in addition to uh, over the Airport Express. Apple had one more hobby, as they, as Steve Jobs stated. They are premiering a new Apple TV. It is $99. You can stream content from Netflix, YouTube, Flickr, MobileMe. Uh, you can also stream content from Macs or PCs on the same network. So just like the old Apple TV, if you have you know iTunes running, anything in your iTunes library, you can also play that on the Apple TV. It's all about streaming. It comes with built-in HDMI, Wi-Fi, 802.11n, uh, I think. Uh, I'll have to double check that Ethernet and an internal power supply and it's literally less than four inches square it is like tiny very tiny you'll be able to get it for $99 and it's uh, available for pre-order today September 1st in related Apple news AutoCAD returns to the Mac uh, you'll get many of the features that you also get in the Windows version it'll be a native application um, they will also be taking advantage of some OS X specific features such as cover flow and multi-touch. Um, it will retail for $3,995 and it's available for pre-sale today, September 1st. Let's go ahead and talk about our sponsor for this episode, GoToAssist Express. There are a variety of tools that le- let you remotely support a client, colleague, or friend. But the only one I trust and rely on is GoToAssist Express, the best remote support tool designed for small to medium-sized businesses, and it's brought to you by Citrix. Why GoToAssist Express? Well, it has exceptional performance, it's very easy to use, and it's secure. IT professionals, really anybody who doesn't have time to squander with a tool that is slow or unreliable will appreciate GoToAssist Express. With GoToAssist Express, you have no IT maintenance or updating, 
It's so fast, you'll be on the other computer troubleshooting or doing a tutorial or, or a demo or anything in seconds. And it's consistently reliable. My audience can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. I repeat, my audience can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. In HP news, HP is announcing a 3D laptop and the fastest netbook they've ever released. Uh, the NV17 3D laptop is, has a 17.3 inch 3D display, comes with speakers, subwoofer, two terabytes of storage, an Intel quad core i7 processor, and AMD's Mobility Radeon HD 5850. You'll be able to play uh, Blu-ray 3D movies as well as over-the-air HD TV, and it comes with a set of 3D glasses. <clears throat> Hewlett Packard is hoping to sell this for less than $2,000. For the netbook that they're releasing, it's coming with the Intel's N550 dual-core CPU running at 1.5 gigahertz. Uh, with that, you'll be able to play 720p video. It's uh, got a 10.1 inch display and weighs 2.64 pounds. So a tiny little netbook. HP and Hynix are trying to also popularize a new chip circuit dubbed the Memristor. Both companies are jointly developing materials and manufacturing processes to create the Memristor chips. The commercial name for the memory is called RERAM, which is short for Resistive Random Access Memory. Um, f as far as the end user is concerned, it works a lot like current flash. It just keeps its data after power is removed, and, but it has lower power consumption than current flash technology, and the storage capacity is significantly higher than current flash technology. While we're talking about flash memory and new types of flash memory, Rice University has announced that they've created the first two terminal memory chips that use only silicon. This allows them to make things even smaller than what they already are and layer the chips on top of each other, which allows for them to have humongous storage density. So when those two flash technologies start to become commercially available, look for a huge jump in capacity in thumb drives and SSDs. Texas Instruments has purchased two Japanese wafer factories. Uh, from Spansion, one of the factories will make 200 millimeter silicon wafers for Texas Instruments current semiconductor business and the other is going to be used for future capacity expansion. In mobile news, Palm has released the SDK for WebOS 2.0 details. Uh, the 2.0 SDK is going to feature things such as multitasking, better access to native hardware, and universal search. According to Palm, it will come out sometime later this year. So who knows when it's actually going to come out, but uh, it'll be interesting to see um, how this actually works on Palm hardware. On the Google front, Google has acquired social gaming company Social Deck. Now, they've not said how they're going to integrate this purchase into Google, but Social Deck has several games under their belt with titles like Color Connect, Pet Hero Puzzle, and all of those are available on iTunes as, as well as a variety of other mobile type platforms. Social Deck also has a social gaming platform called Spark, which connects all the players across the platforms its games run on together. So this sounds an awful lot like Apple's uh, Game Center. Let me see if I got this correctly. Yes, this sounds an awful lot like Apple's Game Center that they're introducing on the iPod Touch. So it'll be interesting to see once this actually comes to fruition and people can use it, uh, how that's going to work. Google has also been working on pay-per-view movies. Financial Times is claiming that by the end of the year, we may see an on-demand pay-per-view movie service on YouTube that has content from major movie studios. Prices have not been set but look for about $5 per, and the service may or may not be integrated with the Google TV platform. It's just too early to tell at this point. In the online arena, OxfordDictionaryThirdEdition.com? What? 
That's right. The head of Oxford University Press has been quoted as saying that the third edition of the Oxford Dictionary might just be published in electronic form only instead of electronic and print form. The third edition isn't due out for yet another decade and no decision has been made yet. So uh, they've got quite a bit of time to make that decision, but still at the same time, 10 years from now, it, there very well may be no physical printing except for in specialty type instances. So it'll be interesting to see how that all comes together. That'll pretty much do it for this edition of The Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up on the show notes. I know I went through a lot of news here, and uh, as uh, these products from Apple become available and people start reviewing them, we'll have a little more in-depth discussion about them. But until then, follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Adrian underscore Bacon. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then.